Hi, I am Giada and in this video I will be teaching you the basics of the Italian writing system. We will be going over the Italian alphabet, spelling and pronunciation, accents, capital letters, the question form, formal versus informal. The Italian alphabet. Did you know that both Italian and English actually use the same alfabeto, meaning l'alfabeto latino, the Latin alphabet? There is one difference though, and that's the fact that the Italian language only uses certain letters, more precisely only 21. Five of them are vocali, vowels, while the rest are consonanti, consonants. On the other hand, in the English alphabet we have 26 letters that are actually being used. Letters like J, K, W, X and Y are considered as foreign letters, and so they're only used with nouns borrowed from other languages. Here are some examples. Jeans, jet, ketchup, Ok, Wi-Fi, Weekend, Xilofono, Relax, Yogurt, Yoga. Of course, this is the way Italian speakers pronounce them. These words are called foresterismi. They are foreign nouns, constructions or expressions that are introduced in another language, like Italian, for example. Spelling and pronunciation I have some good news for you. Italian pronunciation is overall easier than the English one. Let me show you how to pronounce each letter in the Italian alphabet, then we will try to write a whole word down. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Now, how would you spell the noun cane? Dog. C, A, N, E. And how about the word anno, which stands for they have? We will write H, A, N, N, O. Anno. In Italian, the letter H, H, is always silent, so we never pronounce it like we do in English, even in foreign words like hotel. I really want to challenge you and I want to see if you're able to write correctly this word that I'm about to pronounce. How would you spell the word notti, nights? In Italian, we spell notti, n-o-t-t-i. Remember that the letter E is pronounced e, while I is e. Make sure you remember this so you will not confuse them with their English sounds. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, then you should definitely watch Italian words that everybody mispronounces next. I already know that you will love it. Oh, and leave a thumbs up so that I know you're watching. Accents. Un accento is a marker that indicates some additional quality. That's why there's no reason to be afraid of accents, because they're actually there to help you. We have two different types of accent in Italian. L'accento grave, the grave accent, and l'accento acuto, the acute accent. For example, if I say pesco and pesco, do you notice the difference? First of all, the second word has a grave accent on the O, which gives these two words a totally different meaning. The first word, pesco, indicates a peach tree. Che bel pesco! What a beautiful peach tree! Well, if we write the same word but with an accent, we will have the simple past of the verb to fish. Marco pescò cinque pesci insieme a suo padre. Marco fished five fish with his dad. The grave accent is only used with vowels, so any word that ends with a vowel could have a final accent, just like this. Città, te, venerdì, però, più. 
Tornare in città dove hai studiato e vedere che quel bar dove avevi fatto l'aperitivo a Satisperi. Cioè dirmi se va bene, se questo paio di deadline che avevo per venerdì. All you have to do to correctly pronounce words that finish with a grave accent is to stress the final vowel. Easy, right? Our other accent is the acute accent and it can only appear over the vowel E when it's at the end of a word. It also indicates that the final E has to be pronounced has a close E. So, finché, perché? Finché gli venne una piccola idea. Capital letters. Another key element to Italian writing are le lettere maiuscole. Knowing when to use them is essential as they differ from English quite a bit. Le lettere maiuscole are only generally used at the beginning of a sentence and with i nomi propri, proper nouns like a person or a place's name. Here are a few examples. Come ti chiami? Francesco. Pisa. Il Colosseo. Let's do a little quiz to revise what we've just seen. I need you to help me complete the sentence with the correct missing word. Noi andiamo sempre a giocare a tennis il... If your answer was A, good job! In fact, in Italian we do not capitalize the days of the week nor the months. Question form. Did you know that asking a question in Italian is way easier than it is in English? That's because in the Italian language, words don't change your position nelle domande. And you recognize that somebody's asking you a question mainly from l'intonazione and il punto di domanda. Let me show you an example of this. Let's look at this sentence at the affirmative form first. Sua sorella parla francese. Now, if I had to turn this sentence into a question, it would be Sua sorella parla francese. So, as you can tell, all that I've done is simply adding un punto di domanda at the end of the sentence. Of course, if you're writing, it will be easier for you to distinguish a question from a statement. Well, to make sure you can do the same while speaking, all you have to do is practice as much as possible by listening to native speakers. How? Fluent choose the answer. In fact, the movie trailer of Jumanji, in this case, features not one, but many examples of questions that you could hear in an everyday speech. If we pay attention to this particular question, Siamo in Florida, we will see how it has the exact same grammar constructure as a statement sentence would. The only difference? The question mark. You can also click on the speaker button to hear the correct pronunciation and practice it for yourself. That's awesome, isn't it? In order to be good at writing in Italian, you have to be aware of the different ways you have to address people. It all depends on the situation you're in. Formale o informale. It is crucial to refer to people the right way because they might feel uncomfortable if you don't speak to them the way they expect you to. L'italiano formale, the formal Italian, is normally more serious and polite. It keeps a certain distance between the parts and it can also show a kind of respect for your speaker. On the other hand, l'italiano informale, the informal Italian, is more friendly and casual and it often implies that there's already a level of knowledge and intimacy with the other person. What makes such a difference is il pronome, the pronoun that we use to address someone. In Italian, we have two different you you can choose from tu for informal talk, lei for formal speech. Note that the pronoun lei is the third person singular, she, but in the formal Italian it means you and it can refer to both men and women. Hence, the verb conjugation will follow the one of the pronoun lei, she, so third singular person. Let's take a look at an example to clarify this. Tu sei molto gentile. Informal. Lei è molto gentile. Formal. And what if you had to use a possessive adjective that refers to the person that you're formally speaking with? Then you'll simply need to use the corresponding third singular person adjective, just like this. 
Your book is very interesting. Il tuo libro è molto interessante. Informal. Il suo libro è molto interessante. Formal. To help you out, I've also created a PDF with all the information that I've just given you. You can find it in the description below. And if you feel like you need an extra lesson on how to correctly use possessive adjectives, for example, then everything you need to know about possessive adjectives in Italian is definitely what you'll need to watch next.